Woo! What's going on guys, Arms 4 coming at me guys with another video. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about something that's been going on for about a week now. But we're going to be talking about rookie quarterback Hendon Hooker is finally practicing with the team. Now, the Lions open up this uh, 21 day window. He's been in the NFI list. You don't know what the NFI list. It's a non-football injury list because he got hurt when he was playing in college, playing for the Tennessee Volunteers. Um, now, I just want to talk about this. I know it's been going on since since Monday, Tuesday, whatever it is. He finally got activated, and he's practicing now. Now, he's going to be out for this game, and I still go by what I said at the beginning of all this. Um, um, I thought eventually he would be practicing with the team, but I still don't think he's going to ever get activated onto the 53 and be dressing for game day. I just don't think that's going to happen. One of two things could happen here, though. Um, he could could and I don't think this is going to happen because it's way too late in the season he could surpass Teddy Bridgewater as the number two I don't think that's going to happen um but stranger things have happened uh or two or b um they could dress three quarterbacks I don't think that's going to happen either uh because that means that they have to take away take away a position somewhere um, uh, um, on the team. And I think that's a little bit too valuable at the moment um, to kind of like take away take away a position uh, player and add another quarterback, three quarterbacks on the roster. You know what I mean? Usually teams roll with two. And the Lions have kind of rolled with two for a while now, especially Dan Campbell and this new regime. Now, like I said, man, we know who we know who Hannah Hooker is, six foot four, 220 pounds, played five years. Um, at, at the college ranks, uh, Virginia Tech Hokie and Tennessee Volunteers, two massive years at Tennessee, didn't do a lot um, at, at Virginia Tech. Now he's surpassed about 8,974 yards, 80 touchdowns, 12 interceptions, at a 67% completion percentage through his five-year college career. Rushed for over 2,083 yards and 25 touchdowns in those five years as well. Two incredible years at Tennessee over... 6,000 plus yards and 58 total, 58 touchdowns that's through the air and about like another, add another 10, whatever, um, add another 10 th on the ground and only five interceptions, um, over 1,000 yards on the ground as well, plus 1,000 plus yards on the ground, Pl uh, probably on well on his way to the Heisman, um, in 2022, uh, was probably going to be, in my opinion, I thought he was going to be a first-round pick. At worst, a second-round pick. He ended up slipping to the third round. You know, had the devastating uh, a knee injury. Um, and, and, and it just kind of, I'm not going to say it went downhill for the guy, but he, he slipped in the draft. He was probably going to be a first-round pick, like I said. At worst, a number two. Now, all kinds of stuff about this. Him coming out of college, you know, was he smart enough to play in the NFL? Does he got the goods at Tennessee? It was more of a video game esque type of offense where you just pick a spot and that's where he throws the football. Really doesn't require any thinking for uh, um, a quarterback like like Hennon Hooker. Now people will will tell you this. I don't believe this is true, but people will throw the Joe Milton comparison out there because Milton, who was at who was at Michigan, couldn't really get on the field. Played a little bit at Michigan. Uh, ended up getting into the transfer portal, portal. Went to Tennessee. And he is having a good year at, at Tennessee. A very good year. And, and, and an excellent year. Throwing the ball over the field. Running the ball. Doing doing his thing. Now, I think I think Hennon Hooker is a very good quarterback. I think he, he, he has the skill set to be a damn good quarterback. And um, you just got to love the, the, the possible future. Of, of um, Hennon Hooker. Now, is he going to be a future for the Detroit Lions? Is is, is he going to be a career backup? Is he is he is he going to get traded? You know, time will tell. Now, I think he has the goods to eventually probably be a starter, but will it be for us? Who knows? Um, the the, <coughs> the one thing you know, people will people will tell you now. Um, People will tell you now. They will say, "Oh, Hennon Hooker got activated because Jared Goff had a had two bad games in a row, six turnovers in two games. You know he's going to play." Um, no, Hennon Hooker's not playing this year. I, um, I, I, I would put money on it. Um, I, I like to gamble a little bit, but um, 
<laughs> um, I would put my money on Hanhooker not playing a down of football this year for the Detroit Lions. The future, I don't know. Um, now, like I told you guys before about the Jaragoff situation, if you're new to my channel, if you're new to my channel, I was never the uh, the biggest fan of Jared Goff. I was never the biggest fan of the Stafford, Stafford, Goff, and the picks trade. I like the picks. I like the two first rounds, the third rounder. I I do I did like those picks. I didn't. I thought we were getting the lesser talented quarterback though, I, and I still actually feel that way. I actually still feel that way. That doesn't mean I haven't I haven't embraced. Jared Goff. It took me a while. It took me a bit, but I have embraced Jared Goff as our quarterback. Um, like I said, I despised the trade at first. I thought we we're getting the worst quarterback. I don't know what we we're doing. I thought, you know, we're, we're in a rebuild, this, that, that. I was pretty hard on Jared Goff. I will, I will never apologize for the way I for the way I talked about Jared Goff because it was it was opinion. And uh, all I wanted was him for was to get better as a Detroit Lion, and he has done that. He has absolutely done that. His first, his first what ten games were abysmal. His first ten games for Detroit were pretty bad, eight to ten games, whatever you want to say. And then once Anthony Lynn got demoted, he you know got demoted. Ben Johnson, Campbell took over. Jared Goff's career kind of flew off, flew off, went towards the green, upwards, arrows pointing to the sky. He started becoming a really good quarterback. He wasn't throwing interceptions. Uh, he's throwing touchdowns, throwing free yards, completion percentage high, playing really better football, taking care of the football, securing that, securing the rock, doing everything that you want in a franchise quarterback. Um, and then 2022 came along. He had a very nice year, 2022. You know, the defense was absolutely horrific for like 16, 17 games. But we ended up winning like eight to nine games. I think it was eight games we won last year. And Jared Goff was a major part of that, but so was the defense coming through, coming through 2022, pretty much those last six, seven games or that little streak that we went on last year. It was kind of both ways. Two, and we've had a great offense for the past two years. We've had a great offense for the past two years. Real nice at the last end of 2021. 2022, it was damn good. And we've had a, so we can almost say two and a half years. We can almost say two and a half years. And then this year, the offense has been very, very good. Borderline elite, I think. Borderline elite. Top 10 for sure. Top 5 in some categories. Yada, yada, yada. Now, I have, like I said, it took me a while to kind of embrace Jared Goff here. Um, do I think he's the complete answer? I don't really know. I still I still haven't um, come to my own conclusion that I think Jared Goff is the answer here. Um, I have come to grips that I think that he's probably going to get extended. The grips that he's probably going to get extended. And um, I think he's deserved that. Now, the last two games he's played have been horrific. You know, we can point at scheme. We can point at, we can point at playmakers. We can point at O-line. We can point at lack of this, lack of that. Ben Johnson, lack of play calling. The quarterback's job is to secure the football. Okay, plain and simple. He's had six turnovers in, in two games. Now, just because all that happened doesn't mean Hendon Hooker got activated to practice. Now, there's a lot of people out there, like a lot of fans, a lot of fans out there that wanted Hooker in from day one. Those people are called casuals. They don't follow. They don't follow football enough. Um, they're just not. I, I, I just don't know what it is. They're just not smart enough. They don't pay attention. Um, they don't know. This, you know, I think it's a mixture of everything. Um, you really have to pay attention. All you got to do is read. All you have to do is read. You, you, you knew Hooker's, you knew Hooker's uh, um, um, injury was damn serious. He was never going to practice with the team from day one. Now, he put on an NFI list, like I said, and uh, the rest is history. You know, we went through OTAs, went through training camp. What he was doing was stuff on the side. Um, he, he wasn't even doing that at the beginning either. He wasn't even doing stuff like that at the beginning. That took a while before he started even doing individual workouts with trainers, with, with some other guys here and there, you know, sticking around after practice with certain wide receivers and, uh, and, and, and you know, kind of like running routes and throwing passes, doing stuff like that. Now, this is his first time this year he's practiced with the team all year. 
You know, if it was Monday or Tuesday, I can't remember. I um, I can't really recall that. But this is a good sign. This is a good sign for them. It doesn't mean that Jared Goff's job is in jeopardy. It doesn't. I don't even think it means Teddy Bridgewater's job is in debt in jeopardy because Bridgewater has actually practiced with the team for months, three four months. Okay, um, maybe not that long, but a couple months. Okay, but a couple months, and uh, it would take. I think I don't want to say a miracle, but I think it would take a lot of. It would take a lot of Teddy Bridgewater being terrible. And I think it would take a lot of Hen and Hooker just looking incredible. And I know Dan Campbell has came, come out and said, there's a reason why, the reason why we picked this guy. You can just see the way he throws the football. This is why we grabbed him. Okay, That's not a shot on Goff. That's not a shot on Bridgewater. That's just a, that's just a comment towards a player that he's talking about. I know a lot of people want to be like, oh, man, Jared Goff can't throw the long ball. Hen and Hooker can. You know, blah, 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 this and that. Um, I think Goff has done, I think he's gotten better at the long ball. Does he still have the strongest arm in the NFL? Not even close. I think it's medium of the pat. It, 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 it's a medium long ball. That's not necessarily a bad thing. But just because he doesn't have the greatest long ball doesn't mean that Henry Hooker is going to come in and replace him right away. People, Jame, people, people will blame Goff for JMO's, for JMO's product, productivity, you know, the in, in quotations there. His lack of. Um, people will blame Jared Goff for lots of things that he doesn't get blamed for. I've done it in the past. I know fans do it a lot. Um, but I try, to, I try to keep it as real as I can. I know what Jared Goff's uh, deficiencies are. Um, he is not Hennon Hooker. And Hennon Hooker is not Jared Goff. You know what I mean? I think, I think Jared Goff is a much better quarterback at this moment than Hennon Hooker. He's much better than Teddy Bridgewater. It's just a fact. Now... I think they're two different quarterbacks. Does Hooker have a stronger arm? 100%. Um, does, he, does he have mobility? 100%. Uh, he's, a, he's not a running quarterback, but he's mobile. He has rushed for over 1,000 yards in college. He can do it. That's kind of the way that the NFL is kind of trending towards for the last four, five, six years, whatever you want to talk about. They've kind of trended towards the running quarterback. And I think a lot of fans want that. I think a lot of fans want that. And there's and like I said, there's things that I can't stand about Jared Goff. Um I, I can't stand that he's that, that I, I can't stand that he, he he has a lack of mobility. It, that does bother me. That doesn't mean that I want Hen and Hooker right now. That doesn't mean that I want him to play tomorrow because Hen and Hooker can run. No, it doesn't mean any of that stuff. I just can't stand that he he he, that he doesn't throw that well when he's running out of the pocket. Uh, he breaks down if you get if you get even a little bit of pressure on him, he kind of panics and, if, and he's starting he's starting to panic a little bit with um, with his throws. The last two three the last I think the last two three games for sure two games for sure he's been really bad. You know, get a little bit of panic on him when he gets a little bit of pressure on him, and uh, but that's going to happen. I just think they got to work some stuff out. Um, you know, but this is but this. This is a good thing for Hooker. I, I, I still like I still feel like I don't feel I have to educate Lions fans because, you know, all you gotta do is just click on your little mini computer in, in your phone and just find out find out what's going on with Hooker, why he was activated, uh, all that stuff. It's it's a good thing. He's practicing with the team, he's he's back in the mix, he's with the fellas, he's happy he's out there. He said he's just happy to be balling again. It's 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 just, it's it's just that simple. There's a lot of guys that think that, they, that he's going to come in and be this gadget guy. I, I don't think he's dressing now. I would like I said earlier. I would put money on it. I would put money on a head and hooker is not going to dress in 2023. Um, I don't, I just don't think it's going to happen. I don't think he's surpassing Teddy Bridgewater right now. Not because Teddy Bridgewater is this magical unicorn of a quarterback. It's not it at all. It's just that he's in. He's been in the system. He's been practicing with the fellas. I think he knows more of the playbook, but Hooker, you just never know. Maybe he comes in and he just wows everybody, and then they somehow either they release Bridgewater or they carry three quarterbacks. I just don't think that's going to happen. I just think taking away a position at this point is a bad idea by Dan Campbell, you know, Mark Brunel, Ben Johnson. If they make this deci decision that they want to that they want to dress Hooker, I think. That could bite him in the ass. Um, position wise, not because you got three quarterbacks on the sideline, just because position wise you don't wanna you don't wanna decrease those numbers. That's just my opinion. 
But it is a good thing that he's practicing. It's great. He's in the mix. But don't expect him to play, Lions fans. Really don't. This is kind of what I wanted to get across. I know this is not breaking news or anything like that. It's been going on for a week. It's been talked about all month, for months. You know, and I kind of predicted that when it was all said and done, I, I always said, I go, I thought he would practice. I just never thought he would dress. I, I, just, I, I still don't think he was, he's going to dress. He's not even playing this week. He's obviously not dressing this week. He's already labeled out. So it's just his 21-day window. They have to activate him for, for 21 days, and then, then they make a decision. They make a decision in 21 days, and then if that 21 days comes through and they feel like he doesn't, he shouldn't be dressing, He's probably not going to. I think he's just going to be a healthy scratch. I think every week. And then he he, he might even go on the NFI list again. He might even go on the non-football injury list again. Uh, but I don't know if they can do it twice. Actually, I, actually, I take that back. I don't think they can do it twice. I don't think they can put him back on. Maybe they would IR him. Maybe that's, a, maybe that's something they could do. They could put him on the IR. I don't think you can NFI a guy twice. Non-football injury. But... Uh, that's that's basically what I'm really trying to get at is I don't think he's gonna see the field at all. Like I don't think he's gonna be dressing in lions lions gear. Just my opinion, you know. We could have this discussion 2024. This could be a totally different discussion, you know, because I still think that there's a shot that the Lions will extend Jared Goff. I I really do. Um, I think if they do though, I think if they do, this is how I'm feeling at the moment. I think if they do, though, it, there would be a two, three-year extension on top of what he already has. I think he's got next year, and then he's a free agent 2025. So if they give him a two, three-year deal, it could be a three- to four-year deal with an out after about two years. That's my opinion. That's my opinion on it, and I still think they keep a real cheap, cheap um, backup situation with Hen and Hooker next year. I think Bridgewater will be gone. Maybe they re-sign him. Who knows? But I think Hooker will be the backup at least next year and maybe push Jared Goff if he's extended. So we have to always find out. There's no real rush to extend Jared Goff right now. They still have next year to do it. They still have next year to do it because he's not a free agent until 2025. There's no rush right now. We are 8-3. and three. We're looking good. The last three, four weeks, though, we haven't looked that hot. We haven't looked that hot. Offensively, we haven't looked that crisp in about two weeks. I'm not that crisp. We have we've had we've had spots where we're really nice, obviously, but we haven't looked that crisp in, in at least two weeks. And Jared Goff is one of them. It's your job to hold on to the football. Now I'm not just saying all this stuff to be on the Goff, be on the Goff hate train because I don't hate the guy. You know, it was never a hate thing. Never personally with him. It's just that I always I just always wanted him to get better. That's it. Okay, guys. But Hooker's back, back in the mix. We'll see what happens with that. Thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate it. I got another video coming out a little bit later on. I'm trying to get a couple done. Uh, I know I haven't done one in, in a while. Thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate it. One pride. Go Lions. Detroit first, everybody. Let's go, baby. Boom.